and these chocolate pistachio cantucci fit the bill. They are monstrous. Cantucci are a more formal version of biscotti. They're from Tuscany, and that textbook shape we associate with biscotti, that oblong shape, is actually specific to Cantucci. I have four eggs and one egg yolk in my mixing bowl. You could use electric beaters if you wish. I've got the whip attachment on, and to this I'm going to add a cup and a quarter of sugar and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Call that one. Almost as if I was making a sponge cake, I'm gonna whip the eggs and sugar together on high speed. It takes about three minutes, and it'll double in volume and be a pale yellow color. There we go. Look at that volume. I want to fold in my dry ingredients by hand, but I need to sift them first. First, two cups of all-purpose flour. and half a cup of cocoa powder. A teaspoon and a half of baking soda. And half a teaspoon of salt. You can add this all at once to the whipped egg mixture. But I fold it in by hand just to be gentle about things. But don't be nervous if you see the eggs deflating. Remember, you're not making a cake here, you're making cantucci. There we go. So all the dry ingredients are worked in. So unlike that first biscotti I made where I added the nuts and fruit halfway through, this I add the nuts at the end a cup and a quarter of shelled pistachios. Oh, what a treasure. They are unsalted. You can use salted if you wish, if you like that little pop of salt within your cantucci. I think I've lost count here. Three. That makes four, makes one cup, and then and a quarter. So one and a quarter cups all together. Okay, let's be honest. If you slip another quarter cup in there, mm, that'll just be that many more pistachios. And now, to double up on the chocolate, by working in some chocolate chips. You can use regular chocolate chips that you would put in chocolate chip cookies, or you can use baking chips or chunks if you wish. But what I love is you almost lose the chocolate chips within the cantucci, so you don't know they're there until you bite into it. And then you just get these little sharp pops of bitter chocolate. This batter is definitely sticky. So instead of shaping it with my hands, I'm gonna put it directly on my baking tray. And instead of two rolls, I'm going for one, just in big dollops. Now don't worry, it does not have to look pretty at this point. But you just have to get it so that it's in one large piece. I've preheated my oven to 350, and this takes about 35 minutes to bake. I'll let that go for the 35 minutes, and I have one that I did pull out and let cool a little bit. Let's feel. Yep, still warm to the touch, but I can actually hold the tray. See how much that spreads? But it really does feel soft, almost like a cake, but <gasps> these little pockets of chocolate chips still melted in there. And now, serrated knife. And I want to cut textbook cantucci. Look at that grand size and those chocolate chips. All right. And again, you want to leave space for the air to circulate around the cantucci. What's different at this point is you want to make sure you reduce the oven to 300 degrees. Now it's a slow crisping up. So it bakes evenly, crisps up all the way through without burning on the outside. I 
at about the 20 minute mark, you pull them out and let them cool on the baking tray this time. Then once they're cooled, if you snap into one and it's not crispy, you can actually put it back in the oven if you want, just to give it that extra five, maybe even 10 minutes, just to make sure it's perfectly crisp. And look at that. You've got the beautiful green of the pistachio, stays intact and importantly matches the texture and those chocolate chips are just embedded in there waiting for you to dunk it into your coffee and take a big bite. 